one of the solutions or answers to that is let's create a usable past, right? Let's make history not just accessible, but something that students can really get into because they think it has relevance for today. So I ask you, when we look at the policy of conciliation in 1861, as teachers, as educators, should we not say to our students, the radicalization of Southern opinion, white Southern opinion, largely due to the fact that an invading army was present on their soil, should help us understand the bitter resistance that we have confronted today as a U.S. Army, as the U.S. Army has in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, that, of course, is the beginning of a discussion. I'm not trying to provide any answers here at all, but I say this to you. Recognize the risk of an educator making that kind of analogy. It provides the usable past that we're all interested in, but it also leaves the educator exposed to the challenge that they're doing what? Politicizing history. So we need to think carefully about this issue because we are now confronting the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. And the 150th anniversary of the Civil War provides us an opportunity to do what? To create a usable past. What's the great criticism of the centennial? The great criticism of the centennial was, didn't deal with race, didn't deal with slavery, didn't deal with emancipation. Man, couldn't deal with those issues and we're right in the midst of the civil rights movement? How could they blow it? Right? That's the criticism. So I ask you now, when we look back on the 150th, are we not committing the same sins as our fathers? Are we not talking about this war without creating those opportunities to think about the fact that we are what? A nation at war. So again, food for thought, something to consider.